John. Uh, here we are, middle of January, and uh, kind of got a lot of the year end, month end, quarter end um, chores taken care of. And it's, uh, we've already done some reflecting, um, looking back on uh, the year and 2019 and all. Um, so uh, um, I'm going to take a look at uh, where we are on a, on the markets today. Uh, uh, the first part of the year here has been absolutely remarkable. Um, follow, just a follow on to 2019, which was an incredible year, 40% year for the, for the NASDAQ 100. Um, we got another big month going here, you know, just a couple of weeks in, um, I'm watching, um, you know, some of my accounts and I'll talk about watching accounts in a little bit. Cause that's kind of my, my looking forward part here. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you about that in a minute, but, um, um, you know, one of the, uh, one of the ETF, um, programs that we offer, um, to, um, uh, professional firms that, uh, that license our research. Uh, we report on these things, but, um, they're only available, um, to financial professionals who use it for their clients and license the research. But we call it the ETF program called uh, dynamic allocation. It's a conservative ETF strategy. And, um, well, I'll tell you what, it, it doesn't feel conservative. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking over my shoulder here, but it, what I'm looking at is, um, the, uh, the S and P is up 30 basis points at this point in a day, the NASDAQ's up 35. Um, and this thing is this conservative program is up. Uh, hold on here. Let's see. It's up 70 basis points in a day. Um, five ETFs that essentially are buy and hold. Um, and uh, my goodness, things tearing. And that's a conservative model. Um, yeah, I, I think it goes to show that, uh, that uh, or, or what it tells to me in my, uh, if it can do that much to the upside, we also need to be candidly honest and say, probably can underperform by that much, uh, uh, you know, uh, at some point in time. So there's really not too many things that are free in this world. And we've just been on a magic carpet ride. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's uh, good while it lasts, but uh, unfortunately it's not going to last forever. And, you know, we just, as we enter this little, little season of, of earnings and things like that, we usually get some negative uh, yep. blips in there. So it's not to be unexpected to have some downside action in the near future. That's right. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer in mean reversion. You know, uh, nothing goes up forever because it can't. And um, the faster it goes up, then the, the, the quicker it tends to correct. Um, now this is a conservative model, um, but um, still, and, uh, um, when I say model, I mean, this is an actual account that, uh, yes. uh, that I have at uh, TD Ameritrade that um, I'm watching tick by tick here. Um, but, uh, you know, that's looking at the present. Uh, let's, let's take a look forward here. Uh, it's a good time of year. A lot of folks uh, make uh, New Year's resolutions. And uh, I thought today I might uh, pick your brain a little bit and see if you've made any investing resolutions for the year. I've got a couple here that I was thinking about and wrote down, but uh, um, why not, why not you? Uh, why don't you go first and uh, sure, that's, just bare your soul to the world? Uh, what do you the, uh, over Christmas holidays? Uh, I was around, you know, going to festivities and one thing and another. I had a, a chance to talk to some people, and of course, mm -hmm. they know that I'm an investor, so they ask me questions. So the questions uh, usually about what do you think and what's your thoughts and, and, uh, and, and it, it, but more than that, it kind of triggered a, a, a response to, to especially one uh, lady. She said something along the lines of, you know, I really don't have a lot of money to invest. All I do is put money in my 401k plan and, and, you know, it's been doing really good this year. Mm -hmm. and what most people don't realize 401ks and the 403bs are, are clearly uh, an important component and and 
And after briefly talking to her that I said, you know, and, and finding out where her custodian was and things like that, I said, you might be able to use some of our programs because they're fitted for people, for individuals who, regardless of the amount of money, can take the information that we pass on, whether it's uh, inside of a 401k or a 403b. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and I have, uh, you know, a couple of family members that are in the teaching profession that are, that are using the 403b as a tool for our right. money. So saying that, that was one of my, is to try to make people understand that the amount of money and, and how it's being uh, gathered is really of not importance in, in terms of making good financial decisions. And I need to expand on that a little bit because almost everyone out there certainly has had some efforts to, to, to plan for retirement. And as you, as you uh, lose a little more hair and it turns gray, it probably, probably even becomes more pertinent in our thoughts and in our plans. Yep. yep. So that was my biggest one is I'm, I'm going to take our strategies not to, to necessarily to some whiz bang outfit, but to each, to any any individual who has a has, has a desire to to improve both from a risk standpoint and a return standpoint, because they're mm -hmm. both very very uh, useful uh, information. And as she says, you, know, you watch it every day. You should be a little bit better than the average cat. So, <laughs> well, that's, that's, one. that's my good one. That's that. that How about is you? What, what are you? What are you even thinking about? Well, uh, you know, I, I hinted at it a minute ago, talking about you know watching watching this account here tick by tick, and um, you know I do that because I can. Uh, you know, I'm sitting in front of a computer all day long, um, and I I monitor that you know what's going on, but um, uh, I I think one of my resolutions is. Uh, uh, to just to pay less attention on a daily basis. Um, uh, as you, as you know, um, you know, anybody who wants, you know, a weekly report on our, our strategies and our models can get it by just going to, uh, our website, stonebarnportfolios.com and, um, just signing up. There's a little pop-up that'll come up that, you know, offers you the chance to get the free weekly newsletter. And, uh, you know, we just, we put our strategies, our models, a couple of benchmarks there. And um, um, I, I'll tell you what, I, I, I find myself kind of losing track during the week. Okay, we were up this much, we were down this much on any given day. By the time you get to Friday, it's, uh, un unless I have a spreadsheet in front of me, what, what exact, what, was this a good week? Or was this a, not a good week? Um, uh, you know, and how, by how much? Uh, but then Saturday morning out comes that report and I look at it and I go, you know what? Um, I was worried for nothing. I, I, you know, uh, you know, we had a day where we were, you know, down 70 basis points or something like that in a model. And, uh, I'm wondering what's that going to do to overall performance. And when I take a look at it on a weekly basis, then, you know, a slightly longer term, I think monthly would be too far for me. And, uh, I, and this is another hint, I think for anybody who, who invest is they have to find the right uh, time frame uh, for investing. You know, some people, you know, are day traders. Uh, I think that's a really hard way to make money in my view. Some people are swing traders and, you know, they sit and they, they wait for opportunities and setups and uh, that could take anywhere from, you know, a day to, you know, a couple of weeks. Um, I, I really am comfortable with, with a monthly time frame for making investment decisions and a weekly time frame for paying attention. Uh, that uh, and that paying attention is just a curiosity thing. I'm not going to make any decisions on a weekly basis, but right. I am going to make them on a monthly basis. So I'm going to pay more attention to the weekly stuff and less attention to the day by day. Um, I think I'll uh, I think I'll keep more of my hair that way, and that's because you know. Well, a, a lot of the intraday and daily stuff is noise. It's just things going news flashes and you yeah. know, this and that. And the truth is uh, it rarely do those have to those kind of things have impact in, um, you know, of a long-term nature. Right. Yep. So I agree. Think of the time that you could save to drink coffee, 
to to uh, maybe work a little bit, <laughs> and it's a little bit uh, like the uh, uh, the kids that go around with their um, iPhones and <laughs> and if if they would just study half that time, you know they. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if they would, yeah, spend half that time studying, they'd be they'd be that far ahead. One of, one of the other points that I was going to bring up uh, is that I'm going to try going forward next, this year to to ask questions and I, I've asked questions to individuals and what is it that you really really uh, are trying to accomplish mm-hmm. and, and, and usually from those individual things if one person is thinking it probably more have that. And I'm going to try to have a dialogue in some of our chat sessions that that will allow me to hone in on uh, specific individuals that have asked a question, and then to to reiterate or to, to play as best I can, you know, my answer and why it might be pertinent for other people. And and that's a little bit of a play on the first part of mine because. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I, I, sometimes I talk too much. I need to listen better this year and and try to pass that info on to to our friends uh, that, that that could possibly use it. Yeah, uh, I, I think that's a a great idea. Um, I think you know you and I have made the point that um, a lot of the investing world is underserved because their accounts are smaller. You know, less than fifty thousand. And you know, and it seems a shame to say. You know, if you've got less than fifty thousand, you're a small investor. Um, but uh, in the in the world of investment management, um, it's it's tough to to handle and make money um, and serve a client. Um, you know, other if you unless you're doing it for a flat fee, in which case, you know, you still got to figure that fees got to be counted against investment return, and it's just hard. So that the part of the world that needs it most, I think part of our Absolutely. culture that needs it most is the part that gets it least. And, um, I think what you're talking about, uh, listening and, uh, uh, and advising is, uh, uh that, that, that's an important part. That's, that's education. Uh, and that's part of what stone barn portfolios is about is education. Um, and the other part is, uh, you know, helping them make, uh, um, you know, understand invest, the investing world uh, in a way that it helps them get their financial objectives. So right. um, I, I agree with you a hundred percent. That's a good one. Um, the, uh, the other one I was thinking of here, uh, it, uh, it, it goes to uh, partly personality and partly uh, human nature. And um, that is, uh, you know, my, you know, I've got like you, um, almost all, all my money, uh, is invested using the strategies and models that, you know, that, that we report on and uh, we use them ourselves. Um, I'm a, what I would call a, a moderate risk taker. Um, I get less and less so every year, uh, less and less willing to take more risk. And, but here's what happened. Uh, I found myself uh, drinking coffee the other morning and thinking, looking, looking at last year, uh, the S&P was up 30% for the year. The, the NASDAQ was up 40%. Um, my portfolio was up about 20%. And I found myself jealous, uh, thinking, uh, you know, I missed 10 to 20% extra return you know, by investing the way that I'm investing. And, you know, I, I should have gotten that. And, um, you know, then I, you know, and I read articles from other, other uh, strategists and advisors and managers and, you know, you know, they report some incredible performance and I'm thinking, and one or two years of that, and, you know, that'd be great. And uh, I had to remind myself, um, I'm re- I'm really not investing for return. I'm investing to manage risk. And I did that. Uh, I, my, my portfolio um, during the course of the year uh, wasn't much of a year for drawdown in the, in the markets. But even so, my portfolio had half the drawdown That's uh, of the markets. That's what I'm shooting for. So in, in that sense, I, I achieved my investment goal last year 
my portfolio did exactly what I wanted it to do. The, uh, the return was, um, uh, not really, not really what I was shooting for. I, you know, if, if I'm going to invest for a particular risk uh, profile, I need to be happy with whatever return comes out of that. And over time, I know that, um, I can, I, I can achieve a certain, uh, return over, over several years, spread over several years. At least I have a goal of doing that. Um, this year, you know, looking back on 19, 2019, I'm way ahead of my investment goal in terms <laughs> of performance. And, um, and, but I'm right on the money with, uh, with, with my drawdown. And I've got to consider that a success. And I've got to fight the urge to be jealous about what I might have done had I taken more risk. Uh, because we've got strategies that, that, that almost, almost got what the uh, markets did. And, yeah. Uh, but I'm, that's too, they're a little too risky for me, so I don't use them for my own portfolios. I think those, those deep feelings of greed and fear <laughs> are the extremes that we have to deal with. And greed is, is that if uh, someone else is doing it, we need to figure out a way that we can do it. But, but the truth is, they'll have days that, that will... will that will hurt their feelings a little bit along the way. And, mm -hmm. and, and it, you know, and this is just me and you talking to each other. We've built our models mm -hmm. out of risk first profiles. And, and we mm -hmm. have some, of the, I mean, there was some real agony that went into the fact <laughs> that we're, we're going to do every bit. We have parameters that won't allow us to step into places that, that have major swings in the market, uh, major negative swings in the market. Right. And it's almost impossible to have it both ways. It's kind of right. like, you know, you just can't, you, you can't be uh, skinny and have brown hair and then <laughs> also be old fat and with gray hair. So I, I, I like it one way, but I, the truth <laughs> is, look at this picture right here. Look at it. You got it. <laughs> anyway. I, I, yeah. I think those are good good points, and uh, you know, we're we're in the we're in the corner of every investor because we got mm -hmm. our money there, and we're not selling anything except that uh, if you want to join us, you can. Yeah, yeah. If you want to subscribe, you're well, you're welcome to, and uh, um, you know, you you can invest the way that that we invest. Um, we're we're an educational and uh, subscription publishing service, and. Uh, uh, we think we've got some ideas that they can help most investors. Um, of course, if you want to follow us, like I say, sign up for the free weekly updates. That's what, that's what I look at it. And, uh, Hey, how do you like this, uh, this background here instead of my well, usual what's cluttered the office? The company now? I, I kind of, uh, Stone Barn. There you go. Stone Barn. That's right. <laughs> that well, is, that is, that's an actual picture of my, of the wall of my barn from the outside. So, uh, but uh, I put it up here today because my office is kind of cluttered, uh, trying to get through this year-end stuff. And uh, um, so, but that is uh, that's that's my barn, and uh, uh, I should have a green screen behind me. But uh, it's doing a pretty good job of, of uh, you know, <laughs> makes my head look funny sometimes. And I have this chair behind me with with a headrest, and sometimes that sneaks in and you know makes me look like I have. Uh, you know, like <laughs> Aquaman gills or something, you know, Oh yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's the stone barn. So I'm going to have some fun with those pictures. I think, uh, I'll put, put some up of, uh, lavender farm and corn when it gets planted and, and, uh, maybe, uh, maybe a beach scene, you know, um, you know, with a couple of, uh, a you know, couple of nice, you know, dogs walking on the beach or something like that. Uh, yeah, that'd be pretty. <laughs> Don't fool anybody, though. Yeah. All right, my friend. Well, well here's been, the... uh, I'm looking forward to the new year. Um, you know, I'm in up to here, and we'll we'll, we'll have some uh, some interesting things. It's ever changing, and it's our 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 efforts uh, will pay off for you. Yeah, I I, I think so. Uh, I uh, don't know. Um, we've talked about it on other episodes here. Uh, there has to be a, a reckoning here at some point. I mean, th this market is just on a tear. It can't do that forever. And um, I don't know when the reckoning is going to come, but um, uh, I think we'll I think we'll get through it fine. 
uh, at least everything that we've we've done in real time here says so. So, um, all right. Well, good uh, good, I, good, I, good ideas. I'll encourage you. You encourage me. Don't <laughs> let me take more risk than I'm willing to. <laughs> we'll see you.